Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the debut album from Visible Cloaks. Reassemblage. You know, I noticed last year that there was a distinct lack of new acts that I covered. I mean, I covered a lot of new albums from bands I already liked, and checked out a handful of already established artists I hadn't previously gotten into, but there weren't, like, a lot of debut albums that I covered. I don't mean, like, searching through my comments and DMs for people saying, Hey, Mr. Wonky Angle, I'll review my album. See, I follow the iTunes charts on a regular basis looking for some stuff that I could potentially cover every now and then. Trouble is, the electronic charts on iTunes rarely ever move. Most of the time, one or two albums just stays on top of the charts for the entire year, such as Odessa's In Return, Flume Skin, or... Marion Hills Act 1. Rarely an interesting time over there. But occasionally you get something interesting pop up in the charts that look promising. Like uh, last year, I thought about covering Wevel, but ended up skipping it because Mark from Spectrum Pulse beat me to it and ended up saying more than I probably had to say myself. So uh, check out his review and uh, also check out Wevel. They were pretty good. But then we got to this album, which randomly popped uh, in the middle of the iTunes charts. A debut album from two guys I'd never heard of before, with a more experimental bend to them. So I set aside some time to listen to it, and oh, Mark beat me to it again. Screw it, I'm covering it anyway. It's entirely possible Mark stole the words out of my mouth again, but I haven't watched his review yet, so I guess we'll see in that regard. So, Visible Cloaks is Ryan Carlisle and Spencer Duran the former a member of a psychedelic rock band called Eternal Tapestry, and the latter who had a couple of interesting solo efforts like the more rock-heavy Echoplexia and the more ambient Inner Sunglasses. This project seems to be more leaning towards the kind of stuff like the latter. More ambient kind of stuff. Other than that, though, I obviously didn't really know what I was going to get out of this, so I just kind of jumped right in and saw what would come of it. How'd it turn out? Well, I did guess right, and that was pretty interesting. Uh, these guys definitely have a unique sound. The closest match I think I can make is that they're kind of like this stuff one o Tricks Point never did on R Plus 7. Or maybe some of his really early stuff, like Zones Without People and that kind of stuff. Though also with, like, a little hint of, uh, Eno thrown in there. It's noticeably sparser, more ambient, more minimalistic. Take the first track, Screen, which kind of sets the tone for the album. You get some weird jumbled synth melodies right out front. They just kind of play and then fade out. One thing that's interesting about this album, though, is that it's not super reverb-heavy. There's a lot of moments all over this album where the synth melodies just kind of stop and leave a lot of awkward silence, giving everything a more sterile feel than I'm used to. Kind of like the next track, Valve, which turns some Japanese speaker voice, uh, Miyako coda into MIDI melodies, although providing some more synth pads to fill in the empty space later on. Now to be honest, this album doesn't really start to get going for me until the fourth track, Terrazzo, which uh, starts incorporating a lot of Asian instrumentation. Flutes, kodos, that sort of thing. It almost starts reminding me a tiny bit of Andreas Vollenweider in some areas. Another thing I like about this album is that while everything seems to be fairly obviously MIDI programmed and make zero qualms about it, some of the synth settings they use are really nice to listen to. Especially that vibraphone sound that keeps coming back in a lot of different tracks. I am a total sucker for vibraphones and it all sounds great. Tracks like the soothing wintergreen, the vocoder tinged mask, the bright skyscraper, and the refreshing place are some very nice showcases for these sounds. You also got some choirs, violins, other bell sounds, harps, various pianos and electric pianos, some interesting voices and synth tones. All sorts of interesting stuff. Really getting some sorts of, like, zen meditation kind of vibes out of this. Also, while everything is fairly arrhythmic on this album and they just play like a jumble of notes randomly most of the time, there is one track, Mimesis, which incorporates a more rhythmic approach in its first half and uh, kinda almost has a backbeat, and I quite like that track. I think the only one I didn't super care for was Neum, which was a bit darker, more atonal, unsettling. Nice for variety, but didn't get as much enjoyment here as some of the others, I don't think. Otherwise, though, this album's pretty solid. That being said, I do have some gripes with the, this album as a whole. 
I mean, I definitely enjoyed its unique atmosphere and sounds, but by the same token, I don't really see myself returning to this one a lot in the future. I, I do see myself returning to R plus 7 and that kind of stuff more often than this. Because the thing is, this album is very transparent about the way that it's made, and that kind of takes away from the experience a little bit for me. I can tell these guys went into their software and placed a bunch of synth notes around without putting much of any effects on anything. It feels rather sterile and plastic as a result. There are some moments on here where I think, I could probably make this an FL Studio given enough time and the right synth tones. Hell, I think I even have some of these synth tones, like the electric, the electric Rhodes piano on that one part of my Mises. I think I've used that in my own uh, music at some point. But by the same token, while I think I would know how to make something like this, it would probably take me a really long time. Because, I can tell, these guys put a lot of effort into this album. There's plenty of interesting textures. It's not like they just repeated the same stuff over and over. I just kind of wish it were a little less obvious how they made it. When I listen to stuff like R Plus 7, I think, my god, how the heck do you come up with this stuff? This sounds unbelievable. But here I think, okay, I think I know how they came up with this stuff, but it still sounds really nice and they put quite a lot of time into these these textures and making them sound great. So yeah, not super impressive, but definitely enjoyable. I'd say it's worth a shot if you're into that weirder, more experimental one of tricks point never style. Good stuff here. I'm overall feeling a 7.3 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. Thank you.